Well, it's Tuesday morning and we're getting ready to go back to D.C. Congress has been out for five weeks. It used to be said that the country was safe uh, when the legislature was out of session, but in this day and age, it's not true anymore. Government's on an autopilot. The bureaucracies work, the IRS works, uh, the wars continue, so Congress uh, isn't all that necessary. But anyway, things could get worse as uh, we go back into Congress. But already we've been told we won't even be voting on Friday, so there's not going to be too much of a legislative agenda this week. Uh, Obama, of course, will be uh, speaking to the kids uh, today and speaking to a joint session of Congress tomorrow. And I've already heard that uh, the vote on uh, the medical care bill might not come until December. So some good things have happened this summer, these past five weeks, especially at the town hall meetings. The American people spoke out and they got their uh, 15 minutes of fame on, uh, on TV. And it looks like the American people aren't very happy. And I don't blame them. And I uh, like the idea that they're directing their attention to, uh, to Washington. So we will soon, uh, soon find out uh, that uh, whether or not uh, the Congress and the President have become more cautious. Let's hope so. There's been a lot of talk about whether or not the President should, have, should be addressing these uh, kids in the public school uh, today. And uh, I'm, I'm sure his message will be rather benign and in many ways very positive. But the stronger message is, is why is he doing it? And uh, what a th under what authority does a president enter into every classroom in the, in, in the nation? To me, it's nothing more than symbolism to show that where is the power, where is the authority, where does the control of education come from? And unfortunately, it comes out of Washington. The finances come from Washington, the dictates come from Washington, we have no child left behind. Republicans and Democrats expand the Department of Education, and now we have a president. Uh, the man in charge is going to be talking to these kids to let them know. But there'll be a lot of yelling and screaming about, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, what this all means. And if you object to it, you're going to be painted as some sort of a bad person. But uh, in a free society uh, and in a constitutional society, if we followed our Constitution, the federal government wouldn't even be involved in, uh, in public education. And, of course, we would be much better off for it. The more the federal government's been involved in education, uh, the worse the education has, has gotten. So uh, I don't think anything very good will, will come from this. And tomorrow night, everybody will be anxiously waiting to hear what the president uh, will say about his, uh, his plans. Uh, after all these months of talking, now we might hear from the president what his actual plans are. Uh, my, my guess will be that uh, if uh, anything is passed, and I suspect something will eventually be passed, it won't be the original intent of what Obama wanted. We're not going to have socialized medicine. That's, that's not going to happen. But we could have more corporatism involved in medicine, much more corporations. He has not taken on the corporations. The insurance company is going to persist. The management companies are going to exist. The drug companies are going to exist. And worst of all, the bureaucracy will grow, the patients will suffer, costs will go up, and we've seen a recent uh, uh, program saying, well, the culprit is the doctor. The doctor makes too much money, and therefore, if we could make sure the doctor doesn't make any money, everything is going to be okay. That is narrow-mindedness, and this is the whole point. What we need is true competition in medicine, where actually the doctor would make less in true competition because he would have to compete for patients. And uh, yet today, you know, it's a lock system. All medical care is delivered in, by a monopoly, and it's getting worse because even those individuals who would like to practice preventative medicine and natural cures are prohibited by government regulations and the drug companies want to take over control of, uh, of all the vitamins and nutritional substances. So we're moving in the direction of less competition rather than more competition. But nevertheless, uh, I think it'll be exciting uh, fall this year. There will be a few elections coming up that may tell us which way the country is going. People are even talking that uh, Democrats next year may suffer uh, legislatively, and that can't hurt anything because the more competition, the better. 
uh, actually under today's condition, a little bit of gridlock uh, wouldn't be very harmful to us. So uh, as I said, this is Tuesday morning, getting ready to go back to DC. We will have some votes this evening on some suspension bills, but uh, not much else is going to happen this week other than we'll be hearing from the president. But I'm sure the issue of the Fed will continue. I continue to get numerous calls about the Federal Reserve and the auditing bill. And there's gonna be a lot more excitement in the next month or two on this piece of legislation to audit the Fed and the real significance of the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, of course, said their goal is to give us a sound dollar and stable prices and a healthy economy. And exactly, they've done exactly the opposite. They've about destroyed the dollar and the economy is a wreck. And yet what they want is no transparency. So I would say that if anybody with some common sense could look at the uh, Federal Reserve and say that they deserve secrecy and no transparency when they, the Federal Reserve, has been so responsible for our very weak economy and the potential of the total destruction of our dollar.